Support comes from UT's Lady Bird Johnson Wildflower Center, featuring miles of trails and nearly 900 native plant species. More about the official Botanic Garden of Texas at wildflower.org. I'm pretty artistic. I mean, you can tell from my red hair and, and loud colors, but my husband's an engineer who also is artistic. And I, if I have an idea, I'll just have it and then he'll, he can do it. When Cleo and Shay Patrizic moved to Austin and designed their home in 2014, they built it around family, friends, and neighborhood engagement. Cleo planted roses for her beloved mom and flowers for wildlife. Shay handcrafts his designs in a contemporary red barn workshop, while Nigerian goats frolic on the back's steep cliff. Mainly, they wanted to give their son Graham, now eight, a fun inside-outside connection. One of the things we asked the architect to do is give us a large playroom or homeschool room, but we wanted the kitchen, playroom, and outdoor space to be easy to see, easy for kids to get in and out, so we have a big sliding door and the house can just open up. And then this, the nature of the lot meant that this deck had to be kind of this elevated thing above the space below, so that created kind of a very interesting, you know, setting. And then uh, Cleo likes to plant things everywhere, so we worked out to have these cool planters hanging on the railing, which actually just kind of transformed the deck into this something that instead of just feeling like, well, it's just a porch, mm -hmm. to something that really feels like an extension, you know, a real living space. Mm -hmm. So it's really, really nice. And also a place for my mom that she would sit there yeah. and watch the, the kids play. Yeah, we have know. a swing under there, yeah. several swings. So in 1995, my mom was hit by a car the same week that I graduated high school. And, um, before that, uh, I always grew up with her garden. You know, we grew up really humble beginnings. Um, my parents are Mexican immigrants, and my mom even brought some of her plants from Mexico to her house in uh, Dallas, and we actually still have her plants that she brought over. That was something that she always taught, no matter you know where, wherever you are and what station of life you're in, you can have a garden. That's something that I appreciate from her and what I wanted to replicate here, because me and my sister share custody of her. She has brain damage, and the way that I oriented the house and the, the garden, the rose garden particularly, she loves roses. Um, I wanted them to be for her every every other month that she stayed with us you know she had fresh cut roses and the house smells like the roses and it's impressive so that's what we did for my mom and I love to tell neighbors who walk children or older uh, people about plants because if engaging them in any way either by learning the history or smelling them gets them to to want to try it themselves that, that gives me so much joy because that's what it was for me and my mom they give so much given that you only have to do things for them you know every couple months the plants that require the water obviously are roses but a lot of the other plants don't and they give so much like passion flower this perennial even survived the 2021 freeze to quickly ramble over ornamental trees that didn't make it, screening the driveway from late spring to frost, abundant flowers feed bees and butterflies. The Greg Smith's flower that we planted, another thing that I really wanted there because of we have hundreds of butterflies. The kids, they, they get so excited seeing all the butterflies. There's so many plants that I wanted the hummingbirds and the bees and the butterflies to have. The frogs, we get so many animals that I've never seen before and it's really cool that this has fostered an environment where we can have an abundance of all kinds of animals. Cleo sprinkles around colorful trinkets for even more discovery fun. Parents and kids alike check out the Little Free Library. They even bring composting right out front. We have neighbors who bring their fruits and veggies that, that have gone bad in there and it's the best dirt for our garden. To conserve water, they replace the lawn with artificial turf, bordered with a curving strip of river rock. They mulched around the pecan tree's wide canopy as a welcoming, family-friendly hangout. And for this neighborhood in particular, there, there isn't a park, so I wanted something that, the, that was interactive for the children. We're getting more kids in this neighborhood. Graham loves this. When we put this turf in, he, he loves to come out here in the shade yeah. on this turf. He and his friends, would, would love, they love to come out under this pecan tree where this soft grass is and they'll bring Pokemon cards out here and just spread out. It's, it's kind of cool. I didn't expect that. She doesn't like fences. She decided she didn't want anything that was too tall where you couldn't see the house. So we don't have a fence in the front particularly, but we do have the, the rose trellises which are substantial. So you do get some separation. 
but you can see through it. And then between the neighbors where you'd actually want some privacy, we use the bamboo so it doesn't feel hard, but it's actually, once the bamboo's going, it, it, it really does provide pretty much and you can't see through anything. So it, it feels very soft and, and inviting, but gives you the privacy you want. And it's a noise barrier too. Before the freeze, it was double that size, but you know, the, that is all new growth. It, it, we had to cut it all the way to the ground uh, early this year, but it's already, you know, yeah. picking up steam and, and growing back to what it was before. These are all pla babies that I tried planting other where, other pla in other places, but either didn't make it or I need to baby them. So it's basically my little ICU unit <laughs> that, I, that I, we look at and, and see if we can recover or rehabilitate. For my husband, he really loves to do the vegetable gardens. Last year, I didn't have the classy looking. I just had the stock <laughs> tanks. But what I noticed was the, the metal would get so hot in the sun that I thought it was not good for the roots. So this year, I decided to you know dress them up a little bit and build that little wooden skirt. I just drilled holes through two different shapes of wood, strung it up on a cable, and it, the wood doesn't wrap all the way around, and I just attached the cable ends around behind the stock tank with a screen door spring. You know, it's just a facade, but it, it keeps the uh, tank cool to the touch. If you touch the metal behind that wood, it's totally cool in the summer. It actually looks really substantial and kind of architectural, but it's really nothing more than a bunch of scrap wood and, and some <laughs> screen door springs and cable. It was kind of a both to improve the appearance and to try to improve my gardening <laughs> yield on my tomatoes, <laughs> which has so far been abysmal. <laughs> this area was a backfill for a lot of the houses that were built long ago, so there's a lot of rock back there, and we thought it would be the coolest thing for a little boy. But who, guess who else likes rock? Snakes. So I uh, thought, okay, what could we have back there that could handle animal, the heat, uh, and, you know, we can't have dogs outside all, all day long. It's too hot for them. But goats are desert animal, animals. And snakes don't li like that foot traffic stampering in the, in the yard. So we got the goats for several reasons. Um, obviously, I love goats, but I also thought they could keep snakes at bay. They love, you know, trapezing through the yard and balancing themselves. It's so cute. Well, they don't like rain, so they, the, basically this house is a bridge. So where, where the lot falls off, there's a, there's this playroom just is the cover. So the house just continues. So there's a huge area under there that's, that's totally covered and sheltered. We had to do all that terracing because when we, they, so they excavated back and then we realized when it rained, it wasn't gonna stay there and it wasn't any, any real thing we could do about it. So we just decided to do very simple, you know, steel terracing and uh, put, try to put plants down there that the goats can't or won't eat, which is actually really tricky. They eat almost everything that you want and, and almost nothing that you don't want. And they eat even many cactus and yeah. type plants that are thorny, they'll, they can eat. And most importantly, the kids and the adults, everyone loves the goats. They bring branches. They know that they can come to our yard anytime they want uh, and basically treat it as a playscape or a place to enjoy and relax since we do not have a, a playground in this neighborhood. On Halloween night, we watched the cameras. Yeah. We weren't in this neighborhood. We were trick-or-treating elsewhere. And we watched the cameras, kids taking stuff, going back to see the goats. Yeah, it was really it was great. awesome. This year, people trick-or-treated in the daylight so they could all come back here and see the goats. Yeah. <laughs> the koi pond was actually my little boy's horse tank uh, pool that we used. And um, we didn't want to throw it away. We just reused it and used it as, as uh, for the koi. We used some of that water for our roses. Obviously, that's the best fertilizer. During the pandemic shuttered months, Graham's fascination, curiosity, and lessons in the great outdoors grew right at home. I hope that it's something that when he's a, a, a young man will continue to, to, to know the beauty and appreciate nature and how it, it gives you this peace. Um, and through a pandemic, the, we didn't have a park to go to, so this was it. And um, we were able to use this as a place to, to nurture our soul. And, and, you know, we spent a lot of time working and planning new things during that time. And I, I hope that it, it, it carries for him like it carried for me and my mom. Wherever you are, in whatever circumstance you are, you definitely have time to make, to take care of plants and to appreciate them because they give so much to you. <laughs>